Hey folks, this is Steel Cowboy coming to you from Austin, Texas. And tonight we're going to talk about cellaring tobaccos and why it's phenomenal to cellar certain tobaccos. And those of you that do it um, know the incredible improvement that many tobaccos get. And before I begin, um, as always, I'm going to give my tobacco shout out. And tonight it is chocolate flake from Samuel Gaywish and it's a good segue I'm smoking it incidentally in a in a Stanwall it's dedicated to uh, chocolate flake and to Bob's chocolate flake from Gaywish Hogarth um, it's a good segue into what I want to talk about tonight because it's an aged tin um, uh, and it's not your typical aromatic and it shouldn't be confused uh, with one. It's not Cavendish Leyden. Um, what makes it different is it's, it's a Virginia Burley with a, a smidge of Latakia and this would be true also with Bob's Chocolate Flake from Gay with Hogarth. Um, but yeah. If you're wondering why you'd want to sell a tin of tobacco, um, the tobacco I'm smoking tonight is a great example. Um, if you if you take a look at that, look at the bloom all over the flake. Um, and so, you know, the sugars and the Virginias are just blossoming. And it just makes the, the, the flake so much naturally sweeter. And if you're... Um, a fan of sweetened tobaccos, uh, like the traditional aromatics, or what's known today as traditional aromatics, um, as I am occasionally myself, um, I think the natural sugar content, when it's just roaring away like that, um, it, to me personally, is a better smoke than the manually added sugar content. But it takes time. So I want to talk about that. One other thing I want to bring up about this tobacco before I get started is the tin. These rectangular tins from Gaywith Hogarth and Samuel Gaywith are notorious for leaking. So um, be aware of that. Um, I, I've put tape on them as tightly as I can. I know people that wax them. Um, I had a little kitchen fire with one that was waxed. So uh, another story. but. Um, uh, be aware that those tins need to be protected because they do come apart much more easily than your round uh, vacuum sealed tins or the type of tins you would get from Peace or McClelland. Um, so before we get into the how-tos, I guess the question is the why. And in order to answer that, the first thing we have to know is a little bit about the tobaccos themselves that we're selling because not all tobaccos are going to give you the same experience from aging. My experience has been the higher the sugar content, the better uh, in the leaf, the better aging you're going to get. So Virginias, which are very high in sugar, um, are going to age really really well almost always. Um, Burleys which tend to be very low in sugar um, are, are not really going to benefit from aging in the way that other tobaccos will. And neither will um, many aromatics, particularly Cavendish aromatics. Um, you may get some slight benefit, you may get it to stay stored for a long time and stay fresh um, and you may get where, if it's made with food products, where it actually diminishes in value over time. Now, oriental tobaccos, you know, oriental is a, a term that is used to cover a, a number of varieties of tobaccos um, from Greece, Turkey, and that area of, of the world. And uh, it could be Smyrna, it could be Samsung, and, and the list goes on and on. But the point is, is that each one's a little different, and how they age may be a little different. Some have a little more sugar than others. So um, I'm not a blender, I'm not an expert. Um, as I always say, these are views from the couch. 
but that's been my experience. Another thing to point out is that Cavendish and Latakia really aren't tobaccos, you know, they're not grown that way. They're, they're treated tobaccos, as is Perique. Um, and so, you know, Latakia, as probably 99% of you know who are watching this, is, is smoked over fire, more, mainly these days, only these days, from Cyprus. Um, there's some floating around out there from Syria, but hasn't been made for a long time. Um, and those tobaccos can hold up fairly well in the aging process, um, but if anything, they tend to diminish in, in strength. So if you like that deep, smoky taste from, from an English blend with a lot of Latakia, uh, 10 years in a jar or a tin, you may see some softening of that. Um, while the other tobaccos tend to, to rise up. So you may take an English blend that's got, you know, Oriental, Virginia, and Latakia in it, and the Latakia may soften, the Virginia and the Oriental component may sweeten, and now you have, you know, somewhat of a different blend than you had when it was originally tinned. Um, that's not to say it's bad. Um, it could be better. It could be not to your liking. Um, so English blends are a little trickier. Um, so knowing what you're going to sell her makes a big, big difference. And so it's so simple, easy to do. Um, so let's talk about that a little bit. First, I want to talk about what I store my tobaccos in just for daily use. I have a couple of cool jars around uh, around the pipe room that I use that that I like but for stuff that I'm going to smoke relatively quickly and I don't want to leave it in the tin I want to delay the time it takes to dry out I'll use a jar like this which is typically a spice jar um, it, it has a screw top it's not airtight um, and it'll delay the drying process and, and and I want to mention one other thing about drying. This is very, very important. If you're going to sell a tobacco, it really needs to optimally be between 12 and 16 percent moisture content. If you don't have the proper moisture content, um, you're not going to get much of a benefit from aging. Dry tobacco simply doesn't age well. Um, you'll preserve it, but you're really not going to get the benefit of all the cool magical things that happen in the jar or, or tin. Um, well, I, I tend to um, review a lot of tobaccos. Um, they're just my opinions and you know what they say about opinions. But um, uh, And so as a result I have a lot of, a lot of tobaccos open at one time. So what I typically do is I'll use this size ball or, or mason jar for my daily storage. These jars are also excellent for, um, for long-term aging as well. They will hold two ounces very comfortably or 50 gram tin very comfortably. This size mason jar here, uh, which for lack of a better term, it's a 16 ounce, I believe, um, it's a mid-sized jar, uh, will hold about four ounces of tobacco. Um, so the size that you use obviously is important, yes, size matters, and you're going to want to make sure that when you seal the jar that you don't fiddle with it. Um, don't a year from now go in and open it up just to check on it. Uh, we're not baking a cake and ultimately what happens is is that you disturb the aging process. So until you're ready to open that jar, leave it alone. Um, I don't know scientifically whether this is true or not. It's only been my experience, but I find that a little bit of air in that jar, don't cram it into the jar to the point where you're, there's just no space whatsoever. Um, 
I, I you know when I when I say these jars will hold two or four ounces, it does leave a little bit of room for air for most blends. Um, and my experience has been that I get a better result. Um, I've had jars where particularly flake. Um, I had a jar of Stokeby uh, Navy Flake, Luxury Navy Flake that I jarred. Um, and I crammed every bit of space in there and the flakes were compressed together. And what I got was a very, very slow process for aging. Um, now it could have been because it was a bulk that the uh, moisture content wasn't correct. And you know, when we talk moisture content, there's no way that I know of other than a laboratory that you can tell whether you're between 12 and 16 percent moisture. But if you take a tobacco and you, and you push it down and you ball it up and it springs back to life, um, you know, it's probably got the right amount of moisture uh, for, for aging. Now I want to share with you the jar that I like the most. Um, this is the jar where I store the bulk of my tobaccos, and I've got quite quite a bit of them. Um, they're a little bit more expensive. Uh, they're made by Ball, and they're the wide mouth, um, but they hold exactly 50 grams or two ounces. And you know, when I've stored, let's say, eight ounces of tobacco for uh, a long period of time. I don't want to open it and burn through it all at once. Maybe I will, maybe I won't, but I want the option to do that. So um, it's just as if I were opening a tin. Um, if, you, if you seal them by hand really tight, uh, that seal will, will stay on there for, for many years as long as you put them in, in a great storage area. You don't want a room that's super hot like here in Texas where we have 100 degree weather for uh, you know three or four months of the year, um, not a great thing. Um, you also don't want to be in a spot where there's a lot of light, particularly sunlight, not the best thing uh, for your tobacco. So um, I use a, uh, when I lived in the northern part of the United States, I used a cellar. Uh, in Texas, I use a large closet. Um, and so the, there is a drawback to these particular jars, and that is they don't stack well. Um, so you need to be, uh, in addition to the little additional cost, um, you need to be aware of the fact that they don't stack really, really well. Um, so what to expect? Well, I mentioned with the English blends what you're going to expect. Um, it's going to be a little bit hit or miss. Certainly the Virginia component is almost always going to sweeten. Um, the, Virginia, uh, the Virginia blends are going to um, be just wonderful. I didn't mention Perique, but Perique tends to soften a little bit. That's been my experience with age. Um, you may have a different opinion on that, but I find that it softens. Um, and when it melded with those Virginias and a vapor, you get that plum, raisin, figgy kind of smell when you open the jar, um, and it's, it's, it's really inviting. Um, so the last thing I want to mention is this, if you, if you look here, you can see that I label each jar. Um, that's important. I put the amount of the weight on it. Um, if you're serious about doing this, um, go to Walmart, uh, which is incidentally where I get most of my jars as well, and um, buy a kitchen scale. Uh, they're around oh, 12 to $15 uh, for a digital one. And so when you get that, it's, it's also good to keep your, your retailers uh, honest in terms of what they're giving you, uh, because you can weigh it as you're weighing the jars to make sure when you bought 80 ounces you actually got the full eight ounces and 99% of the time with retailers that's not a problem but um, you do want to label them and and here's why if you start getting into this and you in bulk tobaccos are definitely the cheapest way to go right so in, in most cases so um, you're gonna get it in from the from your e-tailer or your retailer and uh, you're going to want to get it in those jars as quickly as possible. 
Um, and those jars start to pile up. Um, I have boxes full of jars, many boxes full of jars. And um, uh, if my wife were not a pipe smoker, I'd probably not be alive right now to, to record this video. Um, I use a, a Word document um, to keep track of mine. Um, there's a pipe club uh, friend of mine in, in the Austin Pipe Club who's created a, a, a unique piece of software called the Pipe Tool. Um, you may want to check that out. It's um, uh, great for keeping track of your pipes and your tobacco. So you want to have some way of, of updating it so you know what you've got and where you've got it. And um, uh, this can be done on a budget. Um, if you look at the pricing between two ounces and four ounces, um, in bulk tobaccos, for the most part, there's not a big difference. Um, so taking that two ounces to smoke now and throwing the other two ounces in a jar um, is an inexpensive way to sell your tobaccos. Um, anyway, that's what I've got for you tonight. Um, I hope that you get the benefit out of selling tobaccos that I have. Um, I really love um, what the outcome is. Um, one other final thought. You may be thinking, well, what's the magic number? You know, how long should I age it? And I think that that's really a matter of personal preference. Um, I know some pipe smokers will say, look, you know what, if I get it into a jar for a couple of years, the differences are, are amazing. Um, for me personally, um, I, I like a minimum of five years. Um, and I remember when I started cellaring seriously, which was about eight years ago, um, I thought, wow, five years is such a long time. And maybe it's because I'm in my 50s. Uh, time just flies by faster. But I'm amazed at how fast that seller aged. And um, if you're continuously buying a little here and a little there, um, you're going to get uh, an aged seller fairly quickly. And if you've looked at the price of uh, tins that are already aged, um, that in itself is incentive to do some celery. Tobacco, and this is a line I heard a long time ago when I first started doing it, um, tobacco is never going to be cheaper than it is right now, today, the day you're watching this video. Tobacco prices don't go down. So uh, another great reason um, to sell it. Anyways, from the great state of Texas, uh, Steel Cowboy here, have a great night.